So I mentioned in my last video that I was doing a two-part series on Draymond and Jokic with the second video being about how Draymond guards Jokic in the post. Even though the post-up has become a lost art, Jokic is still one of the best post-up players because of his passing and scoring ability. This season, he's averaging 1.02 points per possession, which is good for fourth in the NBA. Now, Jokic is listed at 284 pounds this season, and Draymond is 230. So with a 54 pound disadvantage, how is Draymond able to hold his own against a great center? The first thing is his physicality. You have probably heard people say that you can get away with a lot in the post. So here's an example. You can see Draymond's left arm wrapped around Jokic's left hip and his right arm is on his right hip. So Jokic can't get where he wants. Once Jokic passes the ball, his right arm immediately goes up, probably to make sure the ref doesn't see what he's doing. You can see Jokic looking at the ref asking how is that not a foul and I was thinking the same thing but just two years ago when Al Horford was Embiid's daddy he was able to hold his ground by also playing very physical post defense. Here his right arm is near his armpit and as Embiid tries to post him up Horford uses his left arm to push Embiid back and hold his ground. Notice that the ref doesn't call that which means this is probably okay. Again Draymond uses his right arm to hold his ground so Jokic can't get better post position the other thing he did was make sure Jokic couldn't go middle and it's because the Warriors don't want him to be a dual threat as a passer or scorer. If he pushes him baseline, he's more or less looking to score than pass. Look how he's positioned. He's not square but instead on Jokic's right hip so that it's harder for him to go middle. This pushes Jokic into a fadeaway and he misses. And this elbow tugging frustrated Jokic to the point where he elbows the shit out of green and somehow gets away with it. And you can hear Green get mad about it after the play. As Jokic gets fouled. But Jokic is too good to not have any counters. And even if he has slow foot speed, Jokic can be quick in spurts. So Green's playing Jokic middle and he spins quickly which gets him a clear lane to the rim. And he sees Wiggins coming to help. Then he spins quickly middle and is way too close to the rim for Green to bother his shot. Green's also a smart player though. Remember that he's positioned to play Jokic middle, and so this leads for a pass to the outside so Jokic can catch it, but Draymond knows this and anticipates it, and this leads to a steal and eventually gets rewarded with a dunk. And so later in the quarter, Green tries it again, but Jokic knows it so he shields off Green. Then he fakes like he's going left before using his size to get to the middle of the floor and he gets an easy score off of this. Now Green wasn't the primary defender on Jokic because they have Looney, but if you compare the two, you can see how less physical Looney is. I looked up his weight because he looks pretty skinny for a big man and he's only 222 pounds. So this means that Looney has to be even more physical because his build is so small for a big man and you can see that he's not as physical as Green. This helps Jokic get to his spots and scores on these plays. And so the Nuggets didn't have that much success on the post up, especially when Jokic was posting up Green. Where they had some success was the pick and roll because Green can't be nearly as physical. You can see on these that the Murray Jokic pick and rolls help the big man get deep in the paint, which gives them the opportunity to either pass or shoot it. He even had some success on driving to the rim. On the inbound, he has the option for the dribble handoff to Monte Morris, but with Jokic on the move and his 50 pound advantage, there's no way Green's going to be able to move him and he gets to the rim easily. On another dribble handoff, Murray gets Green on a switch and Jokic has a mismatch on Wiggins. He bullies his way to the rim and gets fouled. And so before I end the video, I want to touch on two other things I noticed when watching this game. The Nuggets have a 3 on 2 fast break and I'm going to stop it here. So notice right here it looks like Draymond is going towards Porter to stop the ball but if you look at his right foot he's actually baiting Porter to pass the ball. This prompts Porter to look for Murray and the fact that Draymond is able to jab and recover is really impressive and this is part of his defensive tactics when teams have a people advantage. In the Western Conference Finals Evan Turner has a 2 on 1 with Draymond and Myers Leonard. As Draymond jabs, Turner throws the lob and Green goes up to contest it and the Blazers don't score on a great scoring opportunity. And y'all wanted to learn more terminology. So the Nuggets are setting a double screen for Jokic and you can hear Bazemore yell. 
Now, I have never heard this term before, and the last time y'all mentioned that the Jazz used Hushba as a way to call out the Spain pick and roll. So if anyone knows where the term jet screen comes from or how to define it, put it in the comment section below because I couldn't find anything online about it. My initial thought was that the jet screen reminded me of a jet sweep in football. And if you guys aren't familiar with the jet sweep, watch the guy I circled. He's coming around the formation with blockers and he sweeps around to the other side of the field to get yards. And if you look back at this play, you got Murray and Barnes screening and Jokic is coming around them to get a pass. But I'm probably wrong, so if anyone has input, leave a comment down below. But yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.